Greetings. It's great to be with all of you today, and it's always wonderful to be here at the uh, Microsoft campus, and uh, certainly we're pleased. I think this is my, I don't know, I'm losing track, but it seems like fifth year or more at Autonomous Nation, and it really is exciting to see how it has uh, grown and developed. As you may have noticed, at my side is a gentleman, and his name is George Rumford. He is the director of TRMC, which is the Test Resource Management Center. And I know that you all know what that is, but just in case there's somebody out there that doesn't, the Test Resource Management Center is an agency of the Department of Defense. What they do is they test weapon systems for our military. We have the finest men and women in the world and the finest military in the world. And we have to make sure that they always have the best weapon systems. And so what TRMC does is they make sure that as we develop these new advanced weapon systems, that they're tested, that they're ready to go, and that they work exactly the way they're supposed to, and that we continue to develop and enhance them. And that's more important now than ever as we face this near peer competition with adversaries like China and Russia and others. And so this is an incredibly important mission that they have. What we're here to talk about today is something called the Sky Range program. Now, as you know, we're developing hypersonic missiles. And our adversaries are developing hypersonic missiles as well. You've already seen China and Russia test hypersonic missiles. And we've got to find a way to stay ahead in that race to develop hypersonic missiles. And the difference between a hypersonic missile and an intercontinental ballistic missile is one is on a trajectory, ICBM. George can tell you more about that, uh, you know, and particularly if you have questions, he can answer those. Uh, but a hypersonic missile goes anywhere from five to eight times or more times the speed of sound, but it is maneuverable, right? It's maneuverable. And so we're developing uh, this new missile system, but we've got to test it, right? Got to test it. So how do we test it right now? Well, because these things go so fast, we line up ships, naval ships in the ocean, and we test it. So there they are on the ships, the Atlantic or the Pacific. They have to line up all their ships, right? And then when that hypersonic missile goes over, they try to track it and determine if it's performing as it's supposed to, right? Or not. That's a very cumbersome, very expensive way to do it. And guess what? Our adversaries, like the Chinese and the Russians, they know when we're going to test, so they can track what we're doing, too. So it's expensive, it's cumbersome, our adversaries know we're going to do it. We have needed to develop a new way to test, hypersonic, uh, to test hypersonic missiles as we develop them. George Rumford has led that charge. Now, we were here last year, just about a year ago, which is, makes today's announcement, I think, a little more exciting, a little more fun. And George and I were here last year, and we told you about how at Grand Sky Technology Park in Grand Forks, we are repurposing the Global Hawk, about 30 of them? 27. 27, pretty close. So 27, we, we're repurposing Global Hawks, and we're changing them at the Grand Sky Technology Park, instead of looking down like they do now, to look up. And then we are going to put Global Hawks up there, and then when we test between satellites and Global Hawks, will be much better able to track the results. So that's very exciting development that's going on at the Grand Sky Technology Park in Grand Forks. And we're going to be up there, matter of fact, George and I and Jeffrey Vincent, who's with the FAA, and I'll be talking about him after George and I are done, and then you'll be listening to him as well. Um, but we're, the three of us are going to go up today and get things set, because tomorrow we're going to have some very exciting announcements about the development of the... Uh, of the Sky Range program, specifically the Skyhawks, uh, which will be, which are being refurbished at the Grand Sky Technology Park, and which will be uh, really the heart and soul of the uh, Sky Range test program. So today's announcement is that now Fargo is going to be part of the Sky Range program too, in a very exciting way, and we think no better place to announce that at than at Autonomous Nation because of the amazing technology that's involved. Now think about it. If instead of testing 
hypersonic missiles and then tracking them by ship. We're going to do that with satellites and unmanned uh, vehicles, unmanned aviation. They're going to, we're going to not only be doing it a lot more often, but we're going to gather a lot more data. And as you all know, I think there's a lot of techies in the crowd, how do you manage all that data? You need a data center to do it. The data center is going to be here in Fargo. So the data center for the Sky Range program will be in Fargo. Well, why is that? Well, as usual, George is thinking and developing exciting things all the time. So remember, when we were here a year ago, I'd said to George, you know, our Air Guard is doing really cool things. They not only fly uh, the MQ-9, they also have what's called an ISRG mission at our guard. ISRG is uh, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance, right? But here's, here's the key piece. I said, George, why don't you come down and see if there's anything at our air guard that might be something that you could use as part of developing the Sky Range program. You've got proximity due to Grand Forks, right? But there might be other things that could be of benefit to you. So he comes down and he looks around. Well, it just so happens that in uh, 2021, I was able to secure $17.5 million. So we're building a new operations center for our air guard, right? Our guys do missions globally with the uh, Reaper. And we can't even talk about all the things they do or who their clients are, but they operate globally every day out of Hector, right? And they have a secure operations facility that they operate on. But as we've gotten them new equipment, now they operate the uh, MQ Block 5. So it's an MQ-9 Block 5. New technology, their operations center doesn't uh, accommodate their mission anymore. So in 2021, I was able, through the defense uh, appropriations process, to secure $17.5 million. We started building a new operations center. That new operations center will come online in the fall of this year. So what does that mean? That means that the existing operations center that they have will be a vacant and will be available. George Rumford, as he is doing, keeps coming up with ways to develop the new test system, the new Sky Range uh, program, and he keeps finding resources, finding ways to accelerate the timeline, and finding ways to reduce the cost. So now instead of having to build a whole new facility, and I would guess that that would cost I mean, this is just my opinion, but probably at least 20 million because we secured 17 and a half and started on the new one, uh, you know, years ago. It's going to be completed in the fall, and as you know, it costs a lot more to build today. So we've probably taken two years, accelerated the uh, getting a data center by two years, and saved significant, saved millions of dollars in the process because George and TRMC are going to use that operations facility at Hector for their data center for the Sky Range program. So again, we always talk about the synergies between what we're doing with Grand Sky and here at Grand Farm and all the technology development that Autonomous Nation has been a big part of leading forward. Here is another, I think, really exciting example where the data center for the Sky Range program is going to be at Hector here on our guard base in Fargo, Grand Forks, Fargo, exciting, really being the heart and soul of the Sky Range program. So that's our announcement today. We're very excited about it. And at this point, as a matter of fact, as I say, uh, we'll be talking about a lot of more exciting things that are actually happening, happening up in Grand Forks, but that's for tomorrow. Today it's all about Fargo and how you are now part of, or will be part of the very exciting Sky Range program. George, yeah, thank you. Right on, right on cue, because I know that applause was to welcome the director, <laughs> the director of TRMC, George Rumford. And it's just unbelievable. Uh, he was basically at TRMC, like I say, it's an agency of the DOD that tests our weapon systems. And when they walked in to see George, said, okay, George, you know, we're developing hypersonic missiles. He'll tell you these things go anywhere from, you know, five times to, I don't know, 20 times the speed of sound or more. And he can answer all that for you. But they didn't walk in and say, here's what you're supposed to do, other than they said, George, we've got to find a better way to test these things versus lining up ships, naval ships in the ocean. 
And in just a short period of time, he's got all of this going and the companies that are involved. I mean, it's a whole new paradigm. It's a whole new paradigm. And I don't even know what it's going to lead to. But what I do know is that he is masterminding how to do this. And it's just unbelievable how he's, you know, finding uh, assets and people and equipment to do it in new and innovative and Fast ways. For example, the global hawks, the 27 global hawks, those are the block 10, block 20, and block 30 that we're going to be retired. But instead of retiring them or selling them to some other country, we now are repurposing. We've set up about a $300 million program to change the technology, and now this is going to be how we actually not only stay ahead in terms of hypersonics, but I think there's going to be a lot of other things we do with this new test range as well. So with that, George Rumford. Very good. George? Thank you, Senator. You, you explained that very well. You, you very much encapsulated what our mission is. Uh, to further expound on, on what you're highlighting and, and, and hitting is, is that we need the agility to be able to do these tests over long, long distances, um, and we need to be able to do that uh, very agilely. And so whether we're testing in the Atlantic or testing in the Pacific, we need to have that kind of flexibility to make that happen. These are very, very complex uh, systems that need to be uh, tested. What we're here to talk about and kind of build on what we talked about last year, you know, uh, sky range is that capability that captures data, collects information of how a particular test event is going on. What we really need to do is go beyond and say, how do we really deep dive into that data and understand how well these systems work? And it really comes down to how fast we can process, analyze, and really un gain an understanding of those systems. So uh, as the center highlighted, the, the world has shifted into the amount of data that we collect on our test events. We have much more sensors. We have higher precision sensors. So we're collecting more data there. We're doing a higher, uh, uh, a faster paced test campaign. So, so we've, uh, where we used to test um, uh, and collect uh, a, a set of uh, megabytes of data, uh, we now, and you know, recently we, we ran a test and we collected hundreds of gigabytes of data. And it is not uncommon for us to run a test campaign for a few weeks and gather terabytes of information. Whereas you can imagine, that is overwhelming to data scientists to try to understand and gain insight to, to what happened. What is the important things that we need to be able to understand about this information? So that's where we really employ a lot of artificial intelligence, machine learning tools to be able to go through and understand how uh, the data analytics are playing out. We're really using a lot of commercial best practices and applying it to a DoD mission to kind of understand uh, how that all works. Uh, fundamentally, you need a place where those data scientists get together and, and the information that they are looking at is at high levels of classification. So we really needed to have a facility that we can kind of deep dive into and be able to do that, rather than taking uh, the time, which can take years in the department, to push through an appropriation for new funding, new capabilities. Repurposing capabilities is really where we get our speed from. And so having to be able to take advantage of some existing capabilities here in Fargo is fantastic. But what I'm really focused on is the, is the talent pipeline. It's the data scientists. It's, the, it's having the, the co-location of universities that are doing research in this area to be able to foster graduate student work to really kind of take us our nation to a state of the art of being able to analyze all this information, all this data. Um, you know, when we... When I started my career, we would talk about things like data streams. We don't have data streams. We have data rivers. We don't have, uh, you know, we talk about data lakes. And, and, and when we work on these test campaigns, it really formulates into data oceans. And so we really need to kind of have a skill set and a capability to really analyze that. Because when it comes right down crux to it, data is our, is our fundamental edge. It is our way of understanding our national security. It is understanding how well something is going to work or not work. A, a lot of times when you do testing, you cannot test all the variety of conditions, all the scenarios that you wish to be able to test. 
to be able to formulate an answer. So you work out a design of experiments and you build out that knowledge base, having the skills and the talent of, of, a, of a set of data scientists that can understand how that information comes in so that our nation knows that when our war fighters need to rely on a weapon, they have confidence that that weapon is going to perform. As the center highlighted, I, I work in an organization in the Department of Defense. Um, uh, uh, we are kind of, a, kind of a more obscure, unknown organization. Our, it's easier to describe our sister organization. We're in the, uh, we're in the organization for the Undersecretary of Defense for Research Engineering. That is where DARPA is a part of. So DARPA, where you see this organization trying to come up with innovative technologies for our warfighter, my organization that I lead tries to figure out if that stuff works. So we're the test side to try to figure out how can we innovate for the warfighter. Um, I'm so glad to be able to have the opportunity to share this news to us uh, and, and get this news out to everyone because understanding and, and building what we're trying to do here is going to kind of take an all of nation approach. Data and data scientists is something that our nation needs to expand on by an order of magnitude. We need to have more universities, more pipeline of talent, more skill sets. It is, it, is a, it is a great career field to go into. And I would also contend that when you get right to the core of data and the techniques of understanding data, you, also, you get a ton of dual use capabilities with the, with the commercial and private sectors. Where you can, where you look at how you analyze data on a on an autonomous farm, is very similar to the processes and techniques that we would use to analyze the and reduce data at its fundamental core. It's like understanding the grammar of data is very universal. Uh, there is some aspects, though, of the type of data that I use and the meaning behind that data is why I have to go inside a secure facility because of the sensitivities of that information. But the core technologies, I think, are very universal, and I think is very attractive to, to, this, uh, to this location and to Fargo and the skill sets that you have here in this city. Thank you. Thanks, George. And uh, yeah, thanks, George. <laughs> and hypersonic tractors are next. Is that a trend? <laughs> All, right. All right. Well, we, we uh, any quick questions? Uh, otherwise, we do need uh, to bring Jeffrey up. And uh, I'll introduce him, and we'll continue with his presentation. Yeah. Just a quick question about cybersecurity. Are either of you able to talk more about what's being done to kind of keep the data being processed in Fargo from getting out there to the adversaries, or if you don't want it to get to? Great question. And um, from a, I'll start from a layman's standpoint. Look, um, we appreciate our guard. I mean, our Army Guard, our Air Guard, they're just so amazing. But our Air Guard operates globally out of out of the uh, Hector uh, Air Guard base right now. I mean, they operate globally, and they operate with uh, MQ-9s. And so essentially, they already have in this facility the security and the capability for UAS operations on a global basis. So from a layman's standpoint, it makes perfect sense. And you can imagine the time and cost that, that it takes to replicate a secure center like that. That's why. You know, when I can't ask George to come down and, and start looking around our guard, but, and, and that's frankly how, what it's like working with George. You say, hey, are there some things that you can use as you brainstorm and develop these new programs? And, of course, he figured this out. So that is kind of the layman's answer. George, what did I leave No, out? no, that's, that's excellent. And, and cybersecurity is fundamentally uh, uh, essential and important. Uh, part of the responsibilities of the Test Resource Management Center is actually testing our nation's cybersecurity posture we actually operate for the nation the National Cyber Range Complex, which is a set of facilities specifically to test cyber. Uh, all of our test events were very, very concerned about that data and the protection of that data and maintaining custody of that data. That is why Sky Range needs to have a secure facility to protect that information. Uh, but that, but the, the skill sets of cyber professionals is very important. Uh, and is needed for our nation, and we need to expand those capabilities. And you can imagine our adversaries are always trying to steal that information from us, so it's got to be secure. Yep. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. George, thank, thank, you. thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah.